cheat on me, enjoy your new life, so first off let me tell you, this is a throwaway account, all the names and other stuff are changed because of privacy, also this is not my story, this happened to a friend of a friend, also LTL, FTP, and forgive my formatting, I am on mobile, DLDR on bottom, if this post doesn't qualify for pro revenge, let me know, to the story, me and my friends sometimes hang out with a guy we will call Mark, now, Mark is in his 40s, happily married to a woman, they have two kids in their teens. I will tell this story as accurately as possible from what Mark told us. As you all know, married life can many times get boring with 9 to 5 jobs, mundane life in a small time village, kids are growing up so you don't have to look after them 24 7 anymore. So you do what you can to make life interesting, you get a dog, start some hobbies etc etc. Or so at least Mark thought. He also thought that his happy little life would last forever. Wrong. Mark found out through the grapevine that while he was playing sports, being at work, trying to break the boring life they were having, his wife, let's call her Mandy, was attending to some hobbies of her own, hobbies that included getting sweaty and real passionate with another man from a few towns over, at first the rumors didn't bother him, they were rumors after all, but something in Mandy's behavior started to change, no more funny time with Mark, she started to get distant, no more talking, just yelling, being annoyed etc etc, it went on for a few months, this struck Mark as off, and one time after we were done playing soccer, he asked us what to do, we came up with several advice, like confronting her, but Mark didn't want to ruin his marriage over some mood swings and a rumor, so he did what every sane man would do, slash s, he set up cameras all through the house, and I am talking pie quality stuff here, he had cameras in the bathroom, living room, their bedroom, basically everywhere, but the room of his children, he updated us on his new hobby and his setup, and things cooled off for a few weeks. After a few weeks after soccer time we went out for a few beers. Mark wasn't quite himself, so we inquired what was wrong. He told us that he after several nights of reviving tape, found out that Mandy indeed, was cheating on him. He was furious, they were married 20 plus years, they were high school sweethearts with two boys and she betrayed him. Now comes the revenge part. He didn't confront her right ahead. Mark formulated a plan, living only a few towns over, he had no problem getting the guy's phone number. Now you all know those pesty advertising companies who call you to get you to buy products, right? Mark pretended to be one and called the guy with the pretense he was selling him some body cleansing pills and other crap. He knew the guy was overweight and being quite a smooth talker, he didn't have much problem getting him hooked. He got the guy's first and last name, which he already knew, his address, SSN, job address and some other stuff that doesn't really matter to the story. He told the guy he was in a ballot for different prizes from the company he was working for, and he would stay in touch in case the guy won anything. After that, came part 2. While Mandy was at work on a Friday, he packed all the stuff she owned, clothes, jewelry, collectibles and other stuff into their family car. They have a VW tour and so everything she had easily fit in. When Mandy came home from work he told her they were going on a trip. At first she was against it. But again the smooth talking convinced her to roll over pretty quick and she got in the van with him. Before that he took the boys to one of our friend's house, they weren't 18 yet and he is a responsible father, and off they went. Where did they go you ask? Remember how he called the guy Mandy was cheating with? I think you know the answer. Sadly, or very hilariously, Mandy had no clue. He took her, all of her belongings to the guy's address and called him on the way, telling him to come outside. He said he won the first prize and he was on his way to give it to him personally. Mandy still had no clue, she thought he was just pranking one of his friends. I believe you realized by now that she isn't the brightest one in this world. Imagine her and Guy's face when he rolled into the parking spot of Guy's house. He stepped out of the car, shook the guy's hand and told him, here is your prize sir, I believe you know what it is. Took one last look at Mandy's white face, and walked off. He got custody of both kids since he was better off than her. Also told the judge she was cheating and that's why he was divorcing her. This all happened last year and as far as we know, the guy was an A grade A hole and she left him soon after that. After a few beatings and some trips to the ER slash police station, Mark got over her after some time and a lot of alcohol. But he and his boys are doing great. They were both big enough to realize their mom was at fault, and still barely talk to her when they go to visit. She tried to return into Mark's life on a few occasions, but he did the smart thing told her to F right off. He told us this story after we went out for a few beers after soccer again. I was laughing so hard imagining the whole thing I had to go to the bathroom, otherwise I would have peed myself. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as we did. DLDR, wife cheats on husband, he finds a creative way to get rid of her. Edit, it's not a SSN, we are not from USA, 
Since many people got hung up on it, it's a tax number and I assume he asked for it to sound more believable. Edit 2. Fix some spelling errors. A lot of people are reading a lot into every detail how I presented Mark's story. For instance how he got all of her stuff into one car. Well of course he couldn't, and maybe he got some movers afterwards. Just imagine the van being packed with stuff for a trip. Whatever floats your boat. I said I am writing this from memory so some things may not add up to your careful eyes. Be warned. I also wasn't at the court hearing for custody. But the kids live with him and they visit the mother every other weekend. I asked them how it is and they said it's pretty petty between her trying to get their approval and trying to convince them she was not at fault. They are 16 and 17 years old now, so I believed them. I guess I am sorry for doing that. Lastly, this story is fake just because he got the rights to the kids. I know how things are in the USA, but as far as I know judges here take into account everything. They rather give them to the person who is more equipped to take care of them. That includes salary where they live, how they act in court. Get off your USA high horse since not all governments are female-centered and corrupt. Plot twist, this is all an advertisement for the VW Turin. Illegal eviction and he still gets custody? I think this is imaginary revenge. I'm not the baby daddy, this happened to me over the course of a few years. This is a throwaway, and the story may turn out longer than I thought. The backstory, I have some buddies at work that like to go out with their sows on double dates sometimes. I was invited on several occasions, but let them know I'm not currently dating, so what do they do? They get me a date of course, it's a co-worker of buddies so, we'll call her P. P was a very shy quiet girl from a family that wasn't too strict, or super religious. She seemed out of place at first, but looking back I think she fit in with the crowd more than she let on. I won't give the sows or buddies labels, because they are not relevant for most of the story, but they are important for how she and I met, and one or two other occasions. So as three couples went out, we hit it off, and become fast friends drinking the night away and I end up kissing her and paying for a taxi to take her home. The scare, six months later me and P are living together, she moved in with me, and we are great together. We don't fight, and if we do it's something silly that blows over seconds after it begins. One night after we had done the deed I looked down and noticed my condom broke, panic mode engaged. I start freaking out and tell her what happened, she immediately calms me down and says she's on BC. I get relieved, but then relief turns to surprise. She never mentioned this to me before, did she? She passes it off as something she mentioned to me, but I was busy with Fallout New Vegas at the time. Yeah this was around when that game came out, so I probably didn't notice her say anything. Again looking back, this should have been a red flag. I chalked it up to extra precautions on her part and felt really good about my how well we worked together. She was being responsible for both our sake. BC along with condoms can only make things extra safe right? Nope. She gets sick a week later complaining that she is always in the bathroom, and can't hold food down. Yeah, you know where this is going. The P stand for pregnant. Now, I am usually a pretty calm guy, but man oh man was I flipping my crap. Not at her mind you, I make pretty good money, enough for her to only work part time, and go to school. I don't go to school, I worked, and still do, but in a much higher position, in a trade career which I won't name for anonymity's sake. Babies changed things though, that meant she would have to stop school, stay home for several months, and then full time job. I wasn't worried about me, but her. I can manage, but she wanted to finish school and be stable enough so that if we ever decided to have kids it wouldn't be in this kind of situation. Well, she ends up getting an abortion, begs me not to tell her parents, who again are not super religious, but this is a big negative to them. It took months of her talking to them and me courting her to let us live together, she and I were both 21 at this time. So of course I wasn't going to say anything, I was almost shocked at her decision. That's right, hers. I hoped she would get one for her sake, and mine in all honesty. But I would have stayed and raised that child with her through hard times because I loved her. For about 4 months, we barely talked. I thought things were over, but then one night everything just magically went back to normal. I thought yes we are okay again. This was also a red flag, but in my excitement, I don't think I realized it. Now, having a big scare like that, and knowing she was on BC led me to the decision some of you may or may not cringe at. Vasectomy I had one. Now, I went in for the consult with my primary care doctor and was referred to where I had it done. A week of ice and paid vacation. Now, I know what you are thinking and I saved some juice for later just in case. And although I should have, I didn't tell P. Now, I know that you're thinking WTF, but honestly, she was on break at the time visiting family. I wanted to wait and let her know when she got home and not discuss it when her parents are around. 
wasn't sure how they would react if they overheard. I'm sure you can see how much her family opinion matters, and that will come up later too. I was back at work on light duty and business picked up fast. I had no time to even text, or call her letting her know I needed to talk to her about something important. By the time she got home we both got so busy that I didn't even mention it. This may seem odd since it's a major game changer for a relationship. But I was also a young man whose life was and still is mostly, full of constant go 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 work work work. Crap just vanishes to the cold storage sometimes. The heartbreak. Fast forward two and a half years. I was promoted a few times. Was high off life, loved my so, and we were thinking about getting married when she finished school. By this point our relationship had progressed enough that we no longer used BC pills or condoms. Now, she said she got an IUD to prevent pregnancy. I thought that was odd at first, thinking about how I was snip. Oh well, maybe she just wanted to be extra sure. Well, not so much. About midway through August 2014 and she gets sick again. This time we have no idea what she could have. I rush her to the ER, and become that guy who took his SO to the hospital, to find out she is pregnant. Now, the first thing most of you guys probably think I did was scream F you were cheater. Nope. I acted just as surprised as she did, told her it's fine, we can get through this and I'm with her 100%. The truth. Now state laws differ, and your results may vary, but here, unless the father signs a birth certificate himself in person, it doesn't count. I made sure, because the first thing I did after getting some time alone from her was see my company's attorney for a consult. He recommended me a good person to seek legal counsel in paternal matters. A week and a half or so later I meet him and make sure if I have undeniable proof that I'm not the father, I would have no responsibility for the baby, or pee according to our state laws. So I had my assurances, and as far as she knew, it was probably mine right? After all, we were not using any BC at all, none. Turns out she had scheduled the appointment, had it put in, but was removed because of complications that caused pain and swelling. This I was not informed of. Now, normally I leave personal belongings alone. I trusted her, and did not want to be the overbearing SO that looks at your crap by accident we both had our own phones, PCs and tablets. So she didn't suspect a thing when I searched through literally, no joke guys. Hundreds of emails of her back and forth setting updates, times, and prices that's right, she was freaking for cash. Or so I thought. Turns out, she was actually freaking for free, and selling meds that she stole from patients. The abortion she got was not the first. Oh, did I mention, she was in school to become an RN. She would sneak meds any way she could. She would take them from old people, young people, cancer patients. She was a sneaky effer too. She hid all of this from me, and her teachers, as well as her parents. Her biggest supply was using people she had previously screwed slash sold to. She would have them get hurt, or help them get hurt, and then get them proscribed pain pills. The revenge. I hope you stuck it out, and I hope this belongs here. For the entire time of her pregnancy, I said nothing. To her, her parents, her friends, her teachers. She was close to graduating, and close to being a mom. Everything was so happy for her. Everything was going great. Well, I got an apartment and paid rent for it secretly. The place we lived was in her parents' name. Reason being at a moment's notice they wanted to be able to kick me out for wronging their daughter this turned out to be an amazing blessing. Started selling my stuff to put into a fund for the baby, but was really moving it to my new place. She thought I was crazy when I sold my gaming rig, laptop, and Xbox. I said, it's all for us baby. Now, this next part was risky, but I had no choice. I needed some help. I talked to the buddy who got me with her to begin with. They will be being so. B had left the company I worked for, so this would not negatively affect him in any way. I needed more info on P's part-time job so that I could get back at her. Essa was her boss, and she was exactly the same to them on the outside as she was to everyone else. To this day, I kinda admire her ninja ability, but it's also why I have no regrets or guilt. I told them everything, showed them everything. B, and Essa were shocked, sad, sorry for me. Sorry for her. Then freaking furious with her. How dare she manipulate them like this. Esso stated things go missing from the workplace. Cash drawers short. But P has always covered some kind of way. She had been framing people. And was just very careful and calculated in her plans. Esso said she in all honesty never looked real hard at her either. Her facade had everyone fooled. Well, lucky for me. Esso said in P's maternity leave. Security cameras were replaced and better quality. We made our plan then, in comes the week that she is due. She is wheeled into the hospital and stays for three nights before she births him. I have no problems with the child, as you will soon find out, but at the time he was a symbol of misplaced trust, and a broken heart. They have to take the baby away after a few minutes. He has joined us and although he seems fine want to make double sure, she reluctantly lets him go. P what should we name our son? 
I tell you readers, I must have looked like the cat from Alice, I sure felt like I was. Our, you mean your, what color she had left drains. And she stammers to speak before I put my hand up and tell her. I got a snip six months after we started dating. Her face almost seems to cave in. That confirms for me the baby is only your baby. Not ours, baby. But yours, and yours alone. Alone. Tears. Nothing, but tears. I told her that she was never to speak to me again. And walked out. I told the medical staff that under no circumstances was my name to be on that certificate. I was a concerned former boyfriend that she cheated on. And she was a junkie. Lab reports on the cord blood unfortunately later show this to be true. But the baby was fine. D and that I was only here to make sure her baby was alright. I was not to be contacted, and if she says I'm her boyfriend don't believe her. If I needed to prove that to them I would. I left, packed my crap, and left to my new apartment. Pro revenge. I know what you're thinking, that was not really that harsh at all. I didn't think so either. I waited until she was back at home. I left my keys, and $400 in an envelope at her place so that she had money when she was out, and also to bait her. I knew that she would either, A. Buy some more pills, B. Try and sell her busted cooter. C. Maybe just maybe get her crap together and fix herself. D. Cry to mommy, work, and school. I'll take A, B, and D for $400 Alex. That's right, she did all three. Now, I know at this point I'm okay on the work front. I'm also okay on the parent situation. The moment she was released her parents picked her up because I wasn't there. She called them, complained, told them everything. I was going to be thrown out. But what's this? I'm not there. She was probably upset she didn't get the joy of kicking me to the curb. Instead there was the envelope for her with $400 and the keys. I don't know what went through her head, but she was already back into her normal routine before long. She must have thought I skipped town completely. Calling work leads to a not here they were informed. Asking so leads to B hasn't heard from him. She thought she got off the hook, with one baby, and nothing else. A while later she gets fired. Security footage shows her manipulating drawers and framing other employees. She tells her parents it wasn't her, they believe her. Next, her school gets a big package from an anonymous source letting them know she was recently fired for stealing, and drug use. Now, I am not sure how she got through school, and the hospital without the drugs in her system popping a red flag. I know they tested the cord blood from the baby, and I specifically stated she was a junkie. I never dug into it, probably should have. Her school has zero tolerance policy against drug use. The package also contained the emails, as well as messages to and from buyers, sellers, and anyone else she did shady crap with. Did I mention, the hospital she worked at also got a package? And the police, her parents disowned her, fired, expelled, and CPA was on her case. To wrap it up, she lost everything, including the baby. He's fine now though. His real dad was found. She basically went back and looked for anyone that could have possibly been the father at that point in time. Kinda impressive considering, the guy was 29, call him D, had been divorced, and was lonely. I understand, he had a great house and income, so he was given custody after a paternity test. Best part, the other couple we were with on the first date, she screwed that guy. That's right, he actually still at my company too. I remember when he went through the divorce, I didn't talk to him much, so I had no idea he banged her. It only took one time. She never told anyone she met for sex she was in a relationship. He had no idea we were dating, he didn't talk with me enough, and I was in a different part of the workplace at that point. So, in the end, she has no home, no friends, no job, no career, a rap sheet, and now her kid is with his dad and she gets zero visiting. I'm single, still hang out with her parents, so, and D, have my job, my apartment, and best of all, I'm not the baby daddy. Edit bold was everywhere, writing program messed me up. So you forgot to tell her about the vasectomy. Two and a half years later you've progressed to the point of not using condoms or birth control pills. In all that time and progressing in your birth control methods, the vasectomy never gets mentioned. She wants to get an IUD, you don't at least discuss the vasectomy? Something sounds weird to me. I'm confused. So you were in a long-term committed relationship with her and never told her you had a vasectomy? She had no idea you were sterile when she got an IUD? Paranormal or not, what was the scariest thing to ever happen to you? I got stopped on dark road once by a stray pup. He came running towards my bike and I stopped to check on her. She was shaking and before I could understand, Two dudes came around with a stick in their hand and asked me to give them the pop. I didn't think well, 
I just put the pup in front of me, and drove away really fast, fostered the pup for a week, and my friend adopted it later, informed police about the situation, it was scary as crap for me. In the old neighborhood where I grew up, there was an abandoned windmill that had once been used to pump water. One day I was playing with friends in the lot around the huge windmill, and all of a sudden the large wooden blades starting rotating, something we had never seen happen before. For years it had stood motionless. If one of my friends hadn't yanked me away, a windmill blade would probably have whacked my body. Woke up in the middle of the night to horrific pain in my abdomen. Turns out I'd had an undiagnosed ulcer perforate in my intestines and it had flooded my abdominal cavity, I couldn't move and my two, five week old daughter was in her cot next to me, that was the most terrifying thing ever, the pain was 10x worse than childbirth and I thought I was going to die next to her. It's nothing compared to some of these, but I got peer pressured into facing my biggest fear and it did not go well, on a trip to Mexico, my family pressured me into facing my terror of deep water by jumping into a cenote, very clear deep pool in a cave, being 16 and an idiot, I eventually did, and panicked so badly when I hit the water that I actually have no memory of getting out, the next thing I knew I was back on land, crying and gasping for air, I apparently climbed back out on my own at lightning speed, but it was so stressful that I actually blacked out, it's the only time in my life so far that primal instinct literally overtook me, happened to my friend, he was playing soccer with his friends, the ball accidentally got kicked into an abandoned house near the playground, the whole neighborhood know that no one lives in that house and it's always dark in there, as soon as the ball got past the house wall, the ball immediately got thrown back out to them, thank you satan I guess. This one is going to sound stupid compared to life or death stories but, I was leaving some voicemails as part of my work day, sometimes I'll have a YouTube video queued up to watch in between calls while I'm working on emails, etc, so I get done with a voicemail and turn around to play my video, that day I was watching some true crime documentaries and it was a story of some sicko who kept a girl in his shed and did awful things to her. The host was describing these terrible things and I turned and saw that the voicemail slash phone was still recording, so I had potentially left a 4 minute message full of vulgar true crime descriptions on this poor dude's voicemail. I had to get up and go curl into the fetal position in my living room for a while because I was so sure that was it for my job, either the dude would call back furious or QA would catch the call and send it to my manager. As I laid there I wondered what would happen to my mortgage, how I'd be able to afford to eat once I was fired, etc. Thankfully my headset mic is super good at blocking out background noise, so I tested by calling my own cell phone voicemail and letting another video at the same volume run to see if I'd be able to hear it, and I couldn't. There was just a low murmur of some kind of background noise, but nothing discernible, but I still had to medicate myself after I got off work so that I wouldn't be freaking out about it to the point I wouldn't sleep. Nothing ended up coming of it, thank god, but I definitely had one of those, ooh I'm screwed panic moments right then and there. I was on my way home from the club and suddenly a group of four dudes approached me and my boss who were laughing hysterically at something, they asked what we were screaming at, we told them we want no trouble and moved on, we both noticed, that they were following us and decided since they were four guys and me and my boss were alone to try and run, my boss was faster and the dudes caught up to me pushed me to the ground, I jumped back up and started swinging, I managed to hit one dude before another knocked me back to the ground, as soon as I hit the floor they started stomping my head in, now this is where my memory is almost completely gone, I just remember the hard tomps on my head and me screaming every curse word at them and there is in the German language, next thing I remember is me getting taken into the hospital and the docs telling me to lay still because they did a brain scan, I think MRT is what it's called, I couldn't lay still though since my face and nostrils were completely covered in blood, I faintly remember trying to breath, but it was so hard since blood was everywhere, next thing I remember was waking up on intensive care and having my mom and my aunt next to me, I stayed on intensive care until lunchtime the next day and then moved to a normal room where I stayed one more night, the guys stole my watch, but thankfully I was completely fine and had no lasting brain damage, smile, edit what happened to the guys, police caught them directly after it happened one of the dudes t-shirt was even still full of blood, in cases like those the state sues them automatically, the case was attempted manslaughter, this was over one and a half years ago and I still haven't heard anything from the lawsuit starting, this pisses me off so much, because I'm always the first one to get pulled out by the cops on my way home from work and get disrespectfully talking to or drug tested etc, but when a group of young people almost kill someone for no reason there isn't crap happening, revenge? 
Kiss, I had a good friend back then who knew a lot of bouncers and even some club owners of the area where this happened. He went there the next day and got a hold of security camera footage even before the police did. He offered me to get my friends together and find those guys. After long thinking I decided against it since that would continue the circle of meaningless hate and violence which is one of humanity's biggest problems emo. Of course I desperately wanted to see those guys bleed, but I do not want to give myself into those thoughts. I don't want to do anything based on a bad emotion which I would regret later on life. I chose to go the legal way and talk to the cops, even though some friends of mine looked down on me for that. As mentioned before I never heard anything from the lawsuit starting which pisses me of a bit of course, but I'm still proud of the decision I made back then, I think it's probably one of the wisest ones I ever made. I made too many other stupid decisions in life lol. Losing my job and not being able to find another one When I was 16, I was being blackmailed by someone who found a nude photo of me and was threatening to show it to everyone, because I was so young and scared, I let him abuse me and blackmail me. I was very depressed and suicidal at the time and the blackmail only made it worse. One day, I told him I no longer cared about what he did with the photo and that I no longer had a desire to live. Instead of posting the photo, he threatened to kill my family. Of course, I called his bluff and told him he didn't know where I lived. I was wrong. He knew everything about me and my family. I felt like I was being selfish at the time, but I said he wouldn't be able to get to me if I killed myself first. His threats continued for days while I contemplated actually ending my life. A few days after his initial threat, I got a call from a blocked number, Kim. He told me I had 36 hours to do what he said or he'd go through with his plans. I hung up and called the police. They deemed it a prank call and left it alone. The day after the call, I went to the store with my sister. She had already gone inside, but I was wedged between this big van. The man didn't move or get out, he just stared at me. I opened my door to get out. So did he. I waited for him to go. So did he. After a while, I got frustrated and got out of the car. He got out behind me and immediately grabbed me by my neck and tried to force me into his van. I panicked and bit his hand and stomped on his foot. He let go just enough for me to sprint inside. When I turned to look back, he was already gone. I told my sister about it. She didn't believe me. That night, I stayed up a little longer because I was feeling sick. The front doorknob started to turn. I snuck off to grab a knife and looked out the window. It was the same van as before. I grabbed my phone to call the police, but he left. I checked the other sides of the house. He started to try and break in through the back door as well and then the basement door. He eventually started to pry open the garage door when a police car started coming up the hill to do his rounds. I live in one of those neighborhoods. The man got into his van and left. I never heard from him since. We moved the following year to a different house and I never knew if he posted the pictures or not. To this day, no one believes me. They said it was a prank gone wrong, but I know what it was. I've mentioned this story before. But when I was about 16, me and a friend, let's say Mason, were going to another friend, let's say Daniel's house after school to hang out. For context, me and Mason are black, Daniel is white. So, me, Daniel and Mason walk from school to Daniel's house to hang out, but his family is having some event at their place and Daniel has to stay behind to be social and whatnot. So me and Mason decide to go to the nearby park. I went to elementary, middle, and high school in this neighborhood, so I know the park is open to the public until about 7 8 p.m. Me and Mason make it to the park and just start chilling on the swing sets, talking. Just wasting time until we can go back to Daniel's. It's just us two out in the park. All of a sudden, a cop shows up. Apparently there are reports in the neighborhood of suspicious individuals who are spray painting and putting graffiti everywhere. So he asks if we have any markers or pens or spray cans on us and we say no, we didn't even have our backpacks, we just left them at Daniel's since we were coming back. So he starts asking us questions, why are we here, where do we go to school, etc. And we answer everything honestly, we go to school nearby, and we're just waiting to go to a friend's house. We show him our school IDs and everything. Both our parents are military too, so we also have our dependent cards that we show him. Before we know it, we're surrounded by six cops. They all have us pretty much surrounded in a semicircle. They're all asking us questions at the same time, obviously trying to trip us up and get us to mix our details up somehow, basically just trying to catch us in a lie that didn't exist. Then they start getting antagonizing, playing on swing sets. My five-year-old swings on swing sets, that kind of stuff. We don't give in, we just try and stay calm. At this point I'm very much afraid, but I remember being so clear-headed and super aware of every movement they were making. After some time of them questioning us and antagonizing us, Daniel shows up. As soon as he walks on the scene and sees what's going on he asks what's going on here, and the cops immediately disperse. It was so eerie, like, no apology, 
didn't even really look Daniel in the eyes, as soon as they saw him coming up they walked away. To this day, I wonder what might have happened has he shown up even a couple minutes later. Also, wow, thanks everybody for your kind words and sympathies. It happened a decade ago at this point, but I still remember it clear as day. To answer some questions, this was in Austin, considered by a lot of people to be the most liberal place in Texas. And no, we didn't file any complaints with the APD. To be honest, it wasn't my first brush with cops, I doubt it'll be my last honestly, but I think me and Mason were just too shook up to really consider that an option. It's doubtful it would have been taken seriously, but who knows I guess. We never have actually talked about it since, not even to each other. I think we both just wanted to move on and forget it. Back when I was a kid I used to sleep at my nan's house in the box room and I always woke up and couldn't move or speak. When I spoke to my dad and uncle about it they said they always had the same experience in that room. I have never suffered from sleep paralysis in my life. Having a ruptured ovarian cyst and wasn't fully determined until about a week later, blood from the ruptured cyst had started to flow towards my intestines and started to irritate it, which was the reason why I had thrown up a massive amount of times prior and during that week before finally figuring it out. The first time young me realized we all die one day, through a dream, woke up at 2 a.m., 7 years old, screaming and crying until my father came upstairs to me and comforted me, that in some nightmares where I basically get these freaking hyper-realistic monster faces that pop up in a flash in front of me seems like and it feels like as if I am on drugs because it feels as if it zooms in and out, wobbles and all kinds of crazy crap, still unsettling. A few weeks ago I got up from finishing in the bathroom to find the toilet chock full of blood. Happened twice that day. Getting scoped in both ends in two weeks. Just starting down a steep and long hill in winter conditions when the brake pedal goes all the way to the floor. Thank god just one of the two systems failed. Front I think. I was able to pump the brakes and get it stopped and limp it to the garage. That sinking feeling when your brakes fail, I don't recommend it. My friend and I were walking to his house after school. I was about 10 and he was about 7. We were walking to his house when a guy dressed in full black starts following us. We looked back and he was pulling something shiny out of his black gym bag. We both started booking it to his house taking a confusing path so that the guy couldn't know what house was my friend's. I was driving to work at 3.30 am, half asleep on an empty road, when a deer slammed into the side of my car. Like I didn't hit a deer, a deer rushed my car. I stopped in a parking lot to make sure my car was safe to drive, but then I had to drive back home with one headlight. That was also scary because I couldn't see if there were more deer on the side without a headlight. Was staying in a hotel, woke up at about 2 am screaming, with our fire alarm going off. People I was staying with calm me down, we leave our room, realize that rest of hotel is silent. As soon as we left the room, alarm in our room stops. Report to reception who said they have no account of the alarm going off. We return to our room and have no issues, aside from a severe lack of sleep. Apparently the alarm had been going off for a solid 30 seconds before I remember waking up, and I had been running around the room screaming during that time. Have no recollection of that, no clue what it could have been, but something that truly haunts me thinking about it. I was in the living room watching TV. My oldest brother was in the back of the room with the phone. Our middle brother walks in and starts to tell the oldest to get off the phone. Because his phone bill was 400 euros the month before. My oldest brother was about 12, middle 10 and I was 8. They start fighting. So I hide behind the sofa and try to be as quiet as I can. But I can hear my oldest brother rage through the room, pacing. I'm scared and literally in a corner. But he hadn't seen me yet. So when he paced to the back of the room I ran for it and dashed up the stairs. He was right behind me. I usually went into the bathroom if he got aggressive, but he was too close and I couldn't show down to open the door, so I run up the next flight of stairs yelling at my middle brother to open the door, he doesn't it gets slammed behind me. In this room now was, my middle brother, myself and two of my brother's friends and the oldest is still raging outside, trying to smash down the door. After a few minutes my middle brother goes out to confront him. But the oldest had broken a metal table leg off a table that was in storage to the side and swung it at my middle brother, hitting him in the hand, hurting his pinky finger so he retreats back into the room. My oldest brother continues raging, and now we know he has a weapon so I take my stuffed animal and crawl under the bed, I find an army helmet there, and put it on, then I put it on my stuffed animal instead, because we're both in danger, but nobody, but me cares if they hurt him, so he needed the protection more. My middle brother started calling the police, I could hear him plead with him on the phone for help, but they kept telling him not to make prank calls and they hung up on him. 
After the police hung up twice, you can actually see through the hole in the door at this point. I bravely crawl from my hiding spot, picked up the phone and screamed into it. The police came and my parents came home too. I don't remember my brother being punished. He usually got away with his aggressive behavior. My dad once casually mentioned my brother got probation once, but I'm not sure if that was for this or for hitting his friend. This story is why I have a hard time trusting cops. When I was little they told me cops would help me when I needed them, but they just hung up. What I'm getting from this is that real life is way more scary than anything paranormal. I was a senior in high school, totally head over heels for this guy, and probably rightfully so. We've been through a lot together, as we both have a good number of mental health issues and in the year we had been dating, I had been hospitalized, he had started self-harming again. I had started self-harming, I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, come out to my parents, the list goes on. Anyway, one day at school we're texting. It's second period and we're not doing anything in class so we're going back and forth talking about how he's suicidal, as usual, and how I can help. There's not much I could really do. The last text he sends me is something like I'm sorry. Our teacher decides to start teaching again and I put my phone away. Throughout the day, I start texting him again. But he doesn't respond. I at first figured he maybe had a doctor's appointment he forgot to tell me about or something. But as the day drags on, I know something is wrong. However, I decide rushing out of class to try and drive to his house could go wrong in too many ways. At the end of the day, I go ask his sixth period teacher if he showed up to class, and she says, no. Every atom in my body suddenly felt heavier, my knees were weak, my head was spinning. I was too late. He was dead. And it was my fault. I was going to find a body when I got home. I started to cry and the teacher pulled me out into the hallway and asked what was wrong. She asked if my boyfriend and I had a fight. I shook my head. I think he's dead, I whispered through tears. Her jaw dropped. What? I recounted the day's events to her, the ominous text, the unread messages, his suicidality. She suggested his phone was dead, but since he did most of his classes online at home, that just seemed implausible. He wasn't the sort of person to let his phone die. I was taken to the school counselor's office, despite my begging to just let me go to his house, I had a key. Time was at the essence if there was any chance he was still alive. I needed to get there. I needed to call 911. I recounted the story to the school counselor. They called his mom. I cried some more. Finally, it was suggested I try to call him. I picked up my phone and did just that, certain that he wouldn't answer. The first time, he didn't. I called again. That time, after several rings, a weak, soft voice answered. I let out a sob of relief. Turns out, he had tried to wad on a bunch of over-the-counter pills, Tylenol, Dayquil, Ibuprofen, etc and had passed out for about 5 hours. It was pure luck that he had woke up and answered his phone when he did. He damn near gave me a heart attack and I don't know why I didn't go check on him earlier. He doesn't remember the day or the day or so after that. With all the drugs in his system, I'm impressed that he didn't have any other major side effects. However, he told me today is the first time he hasn't felt suicidal since he was 10. He's put in a lot of work and I couldn't be more proud of him. DLDR my boyfriend tried to kill himself. I blamed myself and had a day-long panic attack because I thought he was dead. I was taken to the emergency room for moments of aphasia, losing the ability to speak properly. Doctors thought it was a brain tumor or many strokes, had a MRI, ultrasound, and there was one more I can't remember. Turns out one of the medications I took caused blood clots. It was about 4 a.m. and I was headed into work. My gas tank was on E. I pulled up to a pump. There were probably three or four other people getting gas. Music was blasting from the speakers and I could barely hear anything. When I pulled in I noticed a man leaning on the wall near a van, but didn't think anything of it. Just as I slid the pump nozzle into my car, I heard him say something to get my attention. I couldn't hear what he said so I got closer. He asked if I had jumper cables. I didn't have them so I said no. He then asked if I could call his girlfriend to come pick him up and take him to work. He gave me the number and I called it. Sorry, the voice mailbox for this number is full was the message. He gave me another number, same thing, voice mailbox full. At this point, I'm starting to get a little worried and part of me was replaying the voice mailbox in my head and it was just message after message of chubby white guys like me going yeah, your boyfriend is stuck at the gas station and needs you to pick him up. Then he asks if I can take him to his car. This throws me for a loop because he was leaning against the wall near a van and I thought that was his vehicle. He then tells me his car is up the road about half a mile at another gas station. Now, I know this gas station. I know that it's not a 24 hour gas station and also that it's in a very dark, secluded area and the surrounding neighborhood is kind of sketchy. 
He says someone let him borrow their bike to get down to this gas station and was wondering if I could give him a ride back to his car. Now, one thing I didn't mention. This is in the middle of winter. What person is going to be riding their bike through town in the middle of the night in the middle of winter, and be totally willing to let a complete stranger borrow it? I reluctantly agree, partly because he was black and I didn't want to assume the worst because of his skin color, and also because I want to do the right thing, but I immediately regretted it as soon as I agreed because the story had way too much weirdness and inconsistency to be legitimate. He said he was just going to drop the bike off inside so the owner can come get it and we could go. The second he walked in the station, I put the nozzle back on the pump, thank god I hadn't pumped any gas yet, jumped into the front seat, and hightailed it the f out of there. I was going through my day like I normally did, and my stepdad came home drunk. When he is drunk, he gets really angry really fast, but I was hungry and I asked if there was anything to eat. He said use the tuna in the bowl and a cucumber and make a sandwich. I asked if I could eat the cucumber by itself and eat the sandwich because I love cucumbers, and he got really mad and started yelling. So my mom sent me to my room, and I grabbed a stick with nails to protect myself. Then about a minute later he slammed my door open and noticed I had the stick with nails, and jumped on my. I started hitting him with it hoping he'd get off and he started choking me I kept hitting him, but my arms just stopped moving. And I couldn't move, nor could I breathe. And everything started to go dark and I started to hear many whispers. Then my mom took the stick out of my hand and hit him in the head. He let go and got up and stormed out of the house and got into his car and left. My mom called the cops and we went to some parking lot. Once they came they asked me if I was okay and I said I felt funny and they wrote it down and shook hands and left and did absolutely nothing about it. There has been many times this sort of stuff has happened, but this one's the scariest. To this day I get nightmares of him beating me and whenever he yells it takes me back to one of those times and I get an adrenaline rush and get pain in my sternum. I also get dizzy and have a hard time breathing. This requires a little explaining, so bear with me. As a kid, I used to walk over to the auto shop behind my house, to buy sodas from their machine. To get there, I had to walk through a few gravel lots, and pass our creepy old shed. This dilapidated old shed came with our house, but we don't use it for anything, as it is old and literally falling apart. My parents had considered taking it down many times, but they hadn't gotten around to it. Anyway, one night my mom sent me to get us some sodas. After dark, I started walking to the soda machine. When I got about halfway there, I heard a bump in the shed. I stopped and looked back, but didn't see anything, so I thought it was nothing. I got the sodas, and started heading back. When I was about halfway back, I heard another thump from the shed, much louder this time. Thoroughly spooked this time, I stopped and stared at the shed. Suddenly, some humanoid thing stuck its head out of the shed, and started crawling out. It was skinny and flesh-colored, and I could see its ribs. I started to seriously freak out. What the heck is this thing? Then when it finally freed all four of its limbs from the ruins of the shed, it started running away on all fours. Only then did I realize, it was just a freaking dog. It still seriously freaked me out though. And I never went near that shed in the dark again. My dog will go crazy at random spots in my room. And then she refuses to go where she was just barking at. Once I was sitting on my bed waiting to go to school when she went crazy and was facing my door. I didn't think anything of it. I was looking outside to see how the weather was so I would know if we could play football that day. My door was wide open. I guess I should mention that my parents were already at work and that my sisters were downstairs waiting for it to be time to go. Well I am still looking outside. It was sunny and still. That's when my door slams. And let me remind you I am still looking outside no wind. I turned around when it slammed. I looked at it for a second and then turned back to the window to see there was still no wind. Creepy. When I was around 7 or 8, I was riding my bike in my neighborhood. I did this almost every day. I had houses I'd stop at regularly and hang out with people. I now realize these hell and ice adults put up with my dummy every day and I love them for it. But one day while I was riding I saw a purple beat up van pull into our street. We lived at the entrance. I paid no mind, but knew they didn't live here. They never passed me. They kept driving behind me, following me. My street ended in a cul-de-sac and had a second cul-de-sac that branched off. I cut the main one real quick and turned down the second and stopped when I saw people outside and I circled around and watched the van. They made a quick U-turn in the main cul-de-sac, just like I did, and waved at me as they drove back up the street. One million percent sure I would've been kidnapped if those people weren't outside at the house I stopped at. Getting out from under the guy who was trying to have intimate time with me without my consent. Upside down face. 
One time when I was a kid I went to get a spoon or something out of the kitchen because my mom made soup for me and my siblings. Once I had gotten my spoon I turned around and a bowl fell onto the floor right in front of me and broke there was glass all over the floor. My mom rushed in and saw me shaking with a spoon in my hand staring at the glass covered floor think I'd done something stupid. I wasn't hurt luckily. But that scared five-year-old me to death I still remember it weirdest thing was afterwards my mom couldn't figure out what had fallen everything was in the same place as before and nothing was missing from the shelf the bowl must have fallen off of. I was laying in bed one evening as a 16 year old, all of a sudden I felt what I can only describe as a mild electrical current going through my body, a split second later, a voice in my head, not mine, nor could I categorize it as male or female, said over and over turn on the light, turn on the light turn on the light. I lay there confused for a few seconds. Then the electrical current got stronger and my bed started to gently shake. It was a single ensemble on wheels and the floor was slate. The voice was still going and by this time I felt a little paralyzed by fear. The bed began shaking violently and actually started banging against the wall. All the while the voice was becoming more urgent. I sat up and put my feet on the ground. The voice and bed shaking then stopped. The light was still off. I looked to my left and in my wardrobe mirror could see a person standing with their right hand on their right hip. The person would have been standing directly in front of me, but with their left side toward my front. They were in the mirror, but they sure as hell weren't in front of me. I jumped up and turned on the light. The whole experience probably took 30 seconds. Slept with the light on that night. I also began locking my door after this experience. I had a room that was once an outside shed, but had been converted to a bedroom. Not too many nights after a male attempted to get into my room. I could tell by the size of them, they were unable to do to the locked door. I didn't make the connection at the time, but I'm pretty sure I was being protected by someone or something with all the turn on the light and bed shaking. Not too sure about that figure though. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories delivered to you. Thanks for listening. See you later.